Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how much current can our radio control vehicle actually pull. We're gonna dive into exactly what this means for us and also what it does not mean for us. But before we get into that, I do have to say that at the time of this recording, we're not quite there yet at a big major milestone for the channel, but I'm quite certain that at the time that all of you are watching this and it's live on YouTube, that if you look down, you will see that major milestone. Now, thanks to an awesome subscriber of the channel, gave me a great idea as to exactly what I can do. And oddly enough, the timing of this could not be more perfect. Right now, I'm actually in the middle of a redesign of the logo for the RC Explained YouTube channel. And this should be finished up within the next day. So at the time of this video being released, it'll definitely be done. And from there, I'm going to be getting it in and working its way onto the channel, onto all the areas where this logo could be used. What I plan to do is place this logo onto a few shirts and then send those shirts off to subscribers such as you. Details for all of this will be covered in the video. Not only will we go through the subscriber giveaway, but I'll give you a little bit of history of the channel and what's happened and how I got to this point. So look forward to that video coming out later in the week. So now let's get started and talk about our topic for today, which happens to deal with the current that our brushless motor can pull. So so the first thing that I want to talk about within this component is all the different components within our power system. We have the speed control, we have the lithium polymer battery pack, and of course we have our brushless motor. Now all three of these components has a current value associated with it. If I were to take a look at our first component that I'm holding up here, this is a 2.2 amp hour battery pack, and it says here somewhere on the pack 35C. We take the multiplication of both of those values, 2.2 multiplied by our 35, and we get what this battery is fully capable of putting out in terms of current. So that would be the specification of the battery. Let's assume for simplicity that it's about 70 amps. For the next component, this is our speed control. It has a number written right on the front, and that number is 60 amps. This 60 amps, much like our 70 amps for the battery pack, this 60 represents the maximum continuous current that this speed control can actually put out. And lastly, if we go and take a look at our brushless motor here. This motor has a specification on it that it can deliver about 75 amps of power. Now we come to that $2 million question of how much power can this motor pull given the three components that you just saw and their specifications? Well, the very simple answer is we still have no clue as to how much power or current this motor is going to pull. All those specifications are completely meaningless to us in order to determine the actual amount of power pulled by this motor. So how can that be? Well, simply enough, if you've seen some of the videos that we've done where we've placed motors like this one onto our brushless motor dyno, we could see the amount of power that motors are actually pulling, the amount of current that they're drawing, and the amount of mechanical and electrical power that they're either putting out or consuming. And through all of these values, we can see how much current specifically that motor pulled for a specific condition. And that condition happens to do with the load of the motor. The load is the most important part of a power system in order to determine how much current you're going to pull. For example, I can take that same motor, such as this one, and demonstrate this simply by showing you that if this motor were to spin and the shaft is rotating just as you see it, we would be pulling essentially zero current. Now the actual current that you're going to pull comes from a specification known as the IO value of the motor. And that is the current pulled at zero load, which is exactly what we're talking about. Now that no load current is completely wasted energy because we're not getting any type of output from our motor. We're not making any mechanical torque, therefore we're getting zero horsepower or zero watts of output. Now as you start to load this motor up, that is when that current value is going to start to creep up from its IO value, from that no load value, which is about two to three amps for this particular motor. 
And then we go on to actually placing a full-blown load onto this motor, and this is where you start to see that the current is going to go up significantly. Let's say that this specific load pulls about 10 to 15 amps of current. Then if we go and realize we want more power or we want better thrust or faster speeds, we change this out for a bigger load. We put a bigger propeller onto our motor. We are now jumping up that current up to let's say 30 to 40 amps. All these values that I'm talking about, I'm essentially making them up for illustration purposes. So now we have a bigger propeller represent more of a load for us placed onto this motor. We would expect that we're going to have that higher current, in which case we are definitely going to get. We realize that that's no good. We step it up to the next available propeller that we have, and this is what we have. Now, this here is going to, again, jump up that current, and if we take it one step further, ultimately what we get to is one of the largest propellers that we have, and we're going to pull more significant amounts of current. So as you can see, the point that I'm trying to make here is the more that you load that motor up, without changing anything else about your system, we're still using the same speed control and the same battery pack through all these examples, that load placed on this motor, and if you wanted a measurement unit of it, would be the amount of torque that the motor has to output is constantly going up as you go to a larger propeller. And as that torque value increases, that's what we're identifying as load, the current value has to increase in order to actually draw the necessary electrical power to produce the required mechanical power. Now it's quite interesting for any of you that operate a radio control vehicle using the typical propeller. This could be electric airboats or a fan car or the more common airplane and drones. What you can do with your setup is place it onto a bunch of calculators that can be found online and you can actually get the output for a specific combination. For example, for illustration purposes, I grabbed this small propeller and I placed it on here on the motor. This propeller would actually throw this motor up over about 60 amps of output power. And you could see this by entering the specific size of propeller. I believe this is a six inch propeller plus the specifications of the motor, selecting the exact motor from a pull down menu. And if you were to try that calculator on a prop like this, you would see that this propeller could easily exceed about 200 to 250 amps of current from this motor. And as you have probably already guessed, if you try to place this propeller onto a motor that's going to potentially spin 30 something thousand RPM on just 7.4 volts, this is not going to work well. This motor would definitely burn out in absolutely less than five to 10 seconds, and you'd be left with nothing else other than a paperweight. Now this might be great for the guy that's running that radio controlled airplane to get a concrete answer as to how much current that you're going to pull within that power system. Now how about for something like a radio controlled RC car. Well, this is going to be completely different. There's not really a calculator online that's going to tell you exactly how much current that this thing's going to pull. And the reason is, is because there's so many more factors that are dumped into this sort of relationship happening where you throw your brushless motor into a car. For example, if you are driving this car at a certain speed, obviously that's going to make a difference in the power that you pull. You try to achieve a faster speed, you're going to place more load on the motor to do more work. If you change the tire and go with a larger tire, you could also see the same effect happen here. But aside from all of those small differences, if you run that vehicle on a hard surface versus, let's say, grass, you're going to see a very big difference in the amount of current pulled. Why? Because grass is going to load up and bog that motor down, which is going to cause the torque of that motor to increase. Remember, anytime we're talking about the torque needing to increase, we are going to expect that we need to have more current being pulled from that motor. Another thing to consider is if you were to drive this into a strong headwind, yes, that can actually influence the amount of torque that that motor is going to pull. Simply put, if you go and ride your bicycle into a bunch of headwind at about 30 kilometers an hour, which is about 20 something miles an hour, you will see that it's a very, very big difference between the headwind versus a tailwind at that same speed. Same with our radio controlled cars. They're not immune to those types of factors. And and then if you're even driving that radio control car up a hill or an incline, you are going to see the exact same results where higher incline is going to require more power being drawn from that 
car. So essentially what I'm saying is it's very difficult to determine how much current that that radio control car is going to pull. Ultimately, what can we do in order to get a better understanding as to how much current our system is going to pull. So typically what I like to do if I'm not experienced to know what to expect out of a radio control vehicle of this size, what I'd like to do is hop onto the internet, find out from someone that runs this specific vehicle. There's gonna be many people that run all types of vehicles there, already have selected power systems and based on their selection if everything is operating cool we're talking about all the components that we were mentioning before our motor our speed control and our battery pack if they're all operating cool we would expect that those specifications of those components would be accurate and we can duplicate that power system. And that would be how I identify many of the power systems that I've run back in the early days to get me started. Now with all of this being said, what kind of takeaway can we get from this video if we don't have anything that's concrete for our radio control vehicles? Well, the big thing that I feel is super important because I get this question almost all the time, when you go and consider all of the different components, your typical battery pack, you know you know all the specifications of this you know the specifications of your speed control and you know the specifications of your motor all three of these specifications is not going to tell you how much current this motor is going to pull you still don't have enough information to determine if this setup is okay if you place this propeller on that setup you just made it not okay if you place this propeller on this setup you made it okay. So the point is, the load is what is ultimately determining how much current that this motor is going to pull. And we can always equate this load factor, this load parameter that we're assigning to the motor directly related to the mechanical torque that we need to drive. If you turn this propeller at 20,000 RPM, you are going to need a certain amount of torque. If you go up to 25,000 RPM by bumping up voltage or whatever else that you may do, you are going to require more torque to drive this at higher speeds. So keep that in mind and then you will understand the amount of current that a specific setup can draw. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and were able to take something away from what we talked about today. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're going to have a giveaway and I'm hoping to have many more giveaways when we come across all the different sub milestones for this channel. I thank you guys so much for subscribing to this channel and continuing on the RC Explained journey as we learn and explore different areas of our awesome hobby. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.